ideas today I want to share with you about poppers. Probably the funnest way to fly fish for just about any kind of warm water fish and even some saltwater fish as well. Um, poppers are, are not only very, very effective, you know, but they're so much fun to fish with because you can see what's going on with them and that's what makes it so much fun. Um, but there's a lot of different styles to choose from and today I'm going to talk about and just share with you some of my ideas as far as different styles of poppers. We're going to start with the hair bugs because um, some of these hair bugs that you can use are just absolutely uh, magnificent when you look at um, the amount of work that goes into some of these things. Um, this one, for example, has just got a ton of deer hair on it and it's got uh, a real nice stiff weed guard on it or as uh, some people refer to it as a fish guard because in many cases these weed guards do make it a little bit more difficult for the fish to, um, to uh, get onto the hook. So the first thing that we typically do with these weed guards is cut them off. Um, so that's one tip for you. I personally uh, don't tie these because I'm too lazy. Um, I never learned to spin deer hair, deer hair very well. And for those of you that do, God love you. The biggest problem that I have with deer hair poppers are that after a while they get soggy and they sink. And they turn from a popper into a kind of a poor imitation of a muddler. And uh, I would rather throw something that's light and, and uh, floats extremely well and I can use for hours without having to worry about it sinking. But uh, they're soft and they land light and, for, and, and in some instances, deer hair poppers are very, very effective. There's no question about it. Uh, so that's one type for you to consider. Um, you can also go ahead and purchase um, hard body balsa wood or plastic body hard foam type poppers. Um, here's a few of them that I've picked up through the years. Um, this was a local tire that used to make these in, in uh, Mountain, Minnesota, where we, I used to live. And um, uh, they actually worked fairly well. There's only one small problem with this type of a design. And I want you to take a very close look at it. It's the relationship of the hook to the body of the popper. Um, the fish comes up and grabs this thing and the body of the popper actually can interfere with the, the hook itself. The hook should be riding further back on a popper. When you buy poppers, make sure that you pay attention to this because it's probably the biggest reason why you're gonna miss fish on a popper. What you're looking for is something more like, um, uh, let's see here, I'm gonna find one here in a minute. I'll just grab one of my foam poppers. My foam poppers always have the hook quite a ways back behind. Uh, the point of the hook at the very closest should be at the end of the body of the popper, okay? Remember that. That gives the fish plenty of room to, to grab onto that popper and get hooked with their lips and not have the body impede um, and, and uh, get in the way of getting a good solid hook set. Uh, here's kind of a cool design maybe some of you have seen. I think it was a saltwater pattern designed for snook if I'm not mistaken. But um, I just took a piece of poly and wrapped it forward and left that little lip up there and those things pop pretty decent. Uh, they don't move water like a flat face or a cup face would, but in some instances maybe a little bit more of a subtle presentation. Kind of a cool fly. You might look at some of these. Um, now, uh, let's get into some of the hard foam poppers. Um, I've got I've got uh, a number of different styles here that I use. This is just a piece of cylindrical foam. Um, you can buy the foam, you can buy the jigs to cut these things out. Just a piece of cylindrical uh, foam. And notice how that hook comes, comes down and away quite a bit. Um, I also use a kink shack. This, um, this fly here, for example, excuse me, go back to the, we'll go back to this black one here. That's actually tied on a kink shank hook. You can't see the kink in it, but that kink is buried in the body of that uh, popper. There's a slice on the bottom of it, and uh, um, it holds up pretty well. It helps kind of keep that fly um, good and solid on there. You also notice that there's a couple different types of tails that I use. Um, this one, for example, has got a nice fluffy uh, marabou tail on it. And I used to use marabou quite a bit. I don't much anymore. And the reason is because the marabou has a tendency to get wet and twist around the tail of the popper. I don't like that. I don't like, like to have to um, straighten the tail off my fly all the time. So I've been going lately with um, 
uh, squirrel hair and the re squirrel tail. And the reason I use squirrel tail is, is because it's straight, it's pretty stiff, it doesn't typically follow foul around the uh, shank of the hook and uh, the materials are readily available on any any uh, highway or roadway near you today. Very easy for you to get a hold of some gray squirrels depending on where you live. Uh, this happens to be the uh, 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 fox squirrel right here and uh, in my area we've even got some black squirrel uh, permutations uh, and we actually have some black uh, squirrel tail we can use as well. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention a couple things. Uh, you might have a couple of sliders with you. Uh, these are meant just to dive down. Uh, this is a hard bodied one here as is this one a little bit different shape. Those sliders if they're if they if they'll come up and they're missing a popper or if it appears as though they're refusing a popper in many cases, you might go to a slider, a little bit more subtle presentation. It doesn't move quite so much water, but still floats high in the water column. Uh, one other thought too. Um, when it comes to poppers, my very favorite design um, is this hard foam uh, and the blockhead design. I, I just have a tendency to like these blockhead shapes. Um, and with or without eyes, some people would argue that eyes are better. Um, I don't really care. I use both ways, and I really can't tell you if there's a big difference with the eyes. But these are relatively small, um, and they're easy to cast, and they'll float all day. You don't have to worry about it. That flat face that's slightly angled forward um, is enough to push water very well. And I like these block designs even better than the cylindrical ones. Um, if you get a cylindrical body like this, um, you can either um, just keep it as a cylinder or you can take your scissors and just very easily clip off the back of it to give it a little bit more of a streamlined type look. Okay, now that this is this is a popper that I would probably call a reject because it's sitting too far back on the hook. Um, you want to get your popper pretty close to within a sixteenth of an inch, if not right up tight against the eye of that um, that hook. So some thoughts about poppers. If you um, haven't used them yet this season, if you don't use them a lot and you happen, you happen to be an underwater streamer guy, that's okay. But I think anybody that fishes bass, be it smallmouth or largemouth, um, this is the time of year now coming up in the latter part of the summer. Water's low. Uh, these fish are starting to look up. The water's clearing up. And this is there's no better time for you to get out there and try some poppers on your favorite river. I'll bet you get some big ones because I always get my biggest fish of the season on poppers. Hey, good luck, Brandon.